Okay, so just to recap, previously we created two new variables called random dice index one and random dice index two. And these were created as containers to store some new random numbers that we would generate. Now we've got this machine essentially called arc for random uniform that spits out random numbers in the range between zero and five. And then we printed out the results. So in this lesson, we're going to cover how to change the image property of UI image views and also how to create arrays. So first things first, how do we change the image views? Now we've got these two image views that are linked up to IB outlets. Now there's one way that's very intuitive and that's of course clicking on the image view and changing the image here to say dice two. But the problem is once the app is up and running, we can't exactly go back into our code and try to change um, these properties. It won't affect the app that's already running. So instead, what else can we do? Well, the other option is that we can programmatically change it, which is what we'll do. So in order to change this image view, I'm gonna have to make a reference to dice image view one. And so we can type in dice image view one dot and then we're going to change one of dice image view one's properties namely the image property so remember that image views are simply picture frames and they have different properties for example they have a size property or they have a background color property but the one that we're going to change is its image property so which picture is slotted into that picture frame and we are going to set it to a UI user interface image. Now user interface image is a data type, just as strings is a data type or integers are a data type, UI image is also a data type. And we're gonna use a special function called image named to pull up an image from our assets.exe assets folder. So if we just briefly remind ourselves what those images were called, they were called dice one through to dice six. Now, you might remember when we dragged these images into the assets folder, they had a .png as the extension or the file type. Now, you don't have to worry about that. Once it goes into Xcode, it knows how to deal with all of that. And all you have to do is refer to it by its name. So let's make it the same as this one. Let's make it show the image of Dice2. Now, just one thing to note is that whenever you use the tab button or enter button, just as when I started typing named and Xcode gave me the right suggestion, it always gives you this light blue placeholder. Now, what the placeholder is telling you is to click on it and change it. And it's giving you the data type of what you should put in here. And in this one, it's a string because I'm going to put the file name of my image here. And remember that strings are always denoted by quotation marks around them. And we're gonna go for dice two. Now, if I hit run, let's see what happens. Okay, so was that what you expected? Or did you expect that our code would change the dice image view one? Well, let's review. Where is this line of code? It's right here. And it's between the closing and opening braces of the IB action roll button pressed. As we said previously, everything in between here only gets executed when the roll button is pressed, hence the IB action. So we will only expect this line of code to execute when I press the roll button. And there you go. Now I'm gonna show you an issue that some people might run into. Now, if you had not typed a string in here, which is denoted by the quotation marks as well as the code highlighting in red, what you might have done is you might have started typing and you typed dice two. Now it's very important to have a look in the left image in each of these suggestions. Now, when it says V, it means variable. When it says M, it means method. And when it is an image, it means that you're actually pulling up a UI image. Now, if I type enter here, Xcode is going to be very unhappy because it was expecting a string in that placeholder, but instead I put in a UI image.
Now that doesn't make any sense to Xcode. So this would give you an error and you can fix it easily by going back to the string form. There is, however, a shortcut to all of this. Um, and it's something that's actually quite new. If instead of using the UI image names method to set the image name that should be shown, if you had just typed dice two and hit enter, and that would also work. But in most case, you'll see programmers actually writing UI image named um, and the dice to name in here. Okay, but now we've got the same problem, right? Every time we press the roll button, it only displays the dice to image. And that's not a very fun app. Now we want the possibility to display all six images. And we're gonna pick out which image that gets displayed based on this random number that we created, right? So in order for that to happen, we have to have somewhere in our code that stores the data about all of our image names. So here, we're gonna introduce you to the array. Now, firstly, I'm gonna type the let keyword. Now, previously, we've seen the var keyword used for variables. And in this case, we've got the let keyword that's used for creating constants. So containers that contain data that never change. So say if I wrote something like my name, which is not likely to ever change. If at a later stage, I decided to try to change my name, now set it equal to Jane, I guess, it will complain. It will not let me do this because it will say that my name is a constant and you cannot change constant. So it's actually suggesting maybe you can change my name to a variable. Now that's not what we want because we are going to create a constant that's called dice array. And it is going to hold all the names of our dice images. And I'm gonna create two square brackets. Now in programming, you've already seen a whole load of different brackets, braces, parentheses, and it can be really confusing and overwhelming at first. It's really important to make sure that you're typing the exact type of brace or bracket or curly brace or parentheses that you see either on screen or on the course book, because otherwise Xcode is gonna get very confused and none of the code will work. So this is very important. Now inside these square brackets, I'm gonna put in the names of my dice face images. So that's dice one. And there we've created our first array that contains all the names of our dice images. Now let's just explain array in a little bit more detail. You should see arrays as essentially egg boxes. They contain things that are of the same type. So for example, you can't have an egg box that contains both eggs and chickens. Um, and similarly, if you're creating an array in programming, you can't have an array that contains multiple data types, such as strings mixed with integers. The next thing to remember about arrays is how we count in arrays. As a normal human being, we would all count beginning with one. So the stripey egg is one and the dotted egg is two. But programmers, as well as computers, actually start counting from zero. So the stripey egg would be at index zero, the spotted egg would be at index one. And so say if I created a constant called my egg um, and set it to the first element in egg array, as you can see above, the zeroth element is the stripey egg and the first element is the spotted egg. So when we're trying to pick out elements from arrays, always keep in mind that you start counting from zero. Now, do you remember when we created the arc for random uniform function? And I told you that this is essentially a machine that spits out random numbers in the range between zero and x minus one. So in this case, we're created numbers between zero and five. And that may have seemed a bit strange at first, but it now makes sense because dice one is at index zero, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect, we have all the numbers we need in order to pick out the right dice image from our array. So let's go ahead and do that. So instead of typing dice two, literally, let's try and pick it out from dice array. So just as we did with the eggs, we would type dice array and then we would use the square brackets to pick out a particular one. In this case, it will be one and not zero if we wanted dice two. 
So let's go ahead and run the app and just make sure that it worked as expected. Perfect, works exactly the same as before. Again, we still haven't really improved on our app, right? It only ever shows the second dice. Now, what we want to happen is for it to show a random dice. So that means instead of putting in one here, which is limiting it to just the um, first index, i.e. dice two, what we can do instead is put in that random number that we created up here. So we can put in random dice index one, and then we're gonna run the app and see what happens. And so it works. The app generates random numbers and uses it to pick out a particular element in the dice array and then assigns that image to dice image view one. All right, so now it's your turn. Let's set dice image view two in the same way that we did with dice image view one and give it a random image between dice one and dice six using our dice array. So now is a chance to pause the video, write your code and run your app and see if it works as expected. All right, so did it work? Let's see if this is what you did. So we're now setting the image view on the right, which is named dice image view two. So we can again check that by just going over here and we're setting its image property to equal a UI image that's named using the dice array. And we're going to pick out a random member of dice array using random dice index two. Let's run our app. And voila, you can generate random dice faces at the touch of a button. Perfect. So at this point, I'm going to point out a very common error that students tend to make. I said, we're going to change the image on dice image view two. And a lot of people just simply take this copy and paste. Don't be embarrassed if this is what you did, because every single programmer has done a copy and paste job. But the problem with the copy and pasting code is that you tend to get errors. And what a lot of people do is that after they copy and pasted it, they might have changed this number to dice image view two, but they forget to change this number to random dice index two, and it stays as one. And this is what happens when you keep it as that. Instead of having two separate dice, you have two dice that simply mirror each other. So this is something to watch out for. And we'll just go ahead and change it back to how it should be. So especially for those students who are starting out with learning programming, it's really good practice to type out all your code um, instead of copy and pasting because you tend to run into errors. And we're fortunate here because we've only got, what, 10 lines of code. You know, when you're working with large projects with 20,000 lines or 50,000 lines, it can be a nightmare to try and find out what happened. So just to recap, in this episode, we created a dice array that held all the image names of our dice faces. And then we used the random numbers that we created um, in the previous lesson to select a random dice face for our image views. So in the next lesson, we're going to talk a bit more about how to become a better programmer, how to be tidy with your code, how to group functionality together in methods, and how to essentially reorganize our code. Until next time, I'll see you there.